What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. We're going to be talking about seven things that I think should not happen in Scream 7. Keyword I. I. <laughs> seven things I do not think should happen in Scream 7. They should not happen. So number one, starting off on this list for me, Stu Mocker should not be revealed as alive as much as I would like to see a well thought out reveal looping in Stu, I would basically be enamored if you were able if you were able to concoct something that is logical and sensible this late in the game. The realistic part of me still believes we are too deep in this web of ghost face shenanigans to try and concoct a story that would satisfy most of the fan base and the general audience. The general audience is who really matters and I just don't see an old character like Stu being revealed as Ghostface and alive. It could make sense, but I think the mentality going into the writing process with the general audience in mind is what can we write that appeals to everyone and doesn't ostracize most of the most of the general viewers who don't study Scream like myself or the next content creator. It just also seems like an overly convoluted route to tackle seven movies in. Um, they've done a fine job of what they've done with Scream 5 and Scream 6. They've taken us down familiar territory, but for a lot of people who are not familiar with Scream 2, Scream 6 was something that, again, appealed to general audiences. Now, the second thing on my list here is that all of the core four should not make it out of this movie alive. Scream 7 has an opportunity to do something that Scream 6 did not do. Ax off one of our beloved core four characters, use their death to light a fire under those that remain during their latest path to unmask Ghostface. And I think it should occur early in the film or midway through to allow their trauma over whoever it is to enhance the arcs of the remaining survivors and make us as viewers despise this Ghostface even more. I think that if you save the fate for the finale or the killing of a core four member in the finale, while it would still be emotionally wrecking depending on how it's executed, I think the usage of it earlier in the film will only enhance any type of disdain that I should have towards the slasher that is targeting these characters that I love so near and dear. And then you add on to the fact that now you've taken away one of them that I was hopefully going to see, hoping to see make it out alive. But of course, from a writing perspective, with what you've done with six, all four of them should not make it out of seven alive again. That doesn't mean that they can't do that because they quite very well they, they can do it again. We know they can, <laughs> but I just don't think it should happen. Now, the third thing on this list here is related to Miss Prescott. Sydney Prescott should not die or be Ghostface. Now, yes, you could argue that's three and four, but I'm going to look at this as two and one for my number three. Sydney Prescott becoming Ghostface is limited in my mind as only occurring in two different ways, either by blackmail or some form of final act revenge like we see in Scream with Billy and Stu during that finale. Sydney dying should not occur because this is one of the rare characters where I argue she's worked so hard to achieve the finish line to the path that was started with Wes Craven's original trilogy. She's at peace. Yes, Ghostface is around, but she's not at the center of these sprees. She has a life that her mother had stolen from her by by Billy and Stu. Uh, she's put all of that behind her, so to speak, for now. And killing her now just seems like a no-no writing decision to make. However, do not misinterpret this as if she dies, I will not praise it. I've always stated that execution is everything. I'm able to state that Sydney should not die or be Ghostface, and I'm also able to give credit where it's due if writers can sell me on their decision to kill her. Similar to how I sh I wouldn't have killed Dewey in Screen 5, but I'm sold on his death given the trajectory of what it was used for and how it was not just tossed in as another body being added to the kill count. It was There was a lot of meaning behind that death and I like how it was used to push the narrative forward when it comes to Sydney and Gail and their usage in the Screen 5 finale. Now, number four on my list, Sam should not be Ghostface. Yes, if written well, same rules apply as Sydney not dying. I would praise it if I were sold on the narrative. Still, this wouldn't be a path I would explore since Sam is on this say no to the dark side path and struggling to come to terms with her relation to Billy Loomis. Granted, she seemed quite content with where her loyalties lie at the end of Scream 6. Sam being Ghostface as our newly propelled final girl would be like a Jill twist all over again, but I'd argue the reason it worked for Jill is because it was capitalized on during Jill's first film. We were misled into thinking that Jill would be carrying the torch going forward as our new heroine, but in reality, she was being set up to carry the torch as our new heroine slash 
secret villain that we knew about, but everybody else didn't know about. If she had gotten away with it, unfortunately, she did not. So Sam, now having endured two sprees, seeing her psyche crumble and beginning to kill her friends and loved ones is an expired idea for me because I would have pulled that trigger during the events of Scream 5 if we we're going to get it in Scream 7, which I hope we do not. Uh, I think that would just be an expired idea they're exploring. Now, number five here for me is if there are three killers, all three should not get to share the reveal during the finale. As much as I love Scream 6, yes, the finale does feel crowded. In fact, you could argue that Scream 5's dilemma is too many survivors in the kitchen during Richie and Amber's reveal. I just think we need to go back to an intimate reveal, two or one killers and their main target getting to hear their spiel, and then you can start adding in more survivors to the mix, like Scream 1 and 4 seem to do quite well, if I'm being honest. Scream 6 just had a lot of people needing to get attention post unmasking and it didn't work out that well although i looked i do love that finale i still think scream 6 is like the third best in the series if there are three killers one should die midway through or be like a surprise reveal after the first two die at the hands of our other survivors so that way everything gets a chance to breathe number six on my list christina carpenter should not be left unconnected to the original woodsboro murders and she should not be absent from the film altogether more importantly she should just not be absent she needs to make an appearance she's been hyped up more or less as the marine prescott of this trilogy it's time to get her ass in here it's time for her to explain herself it's time for her to reveal a secret that i hope she does reveal and that's that she knew about what billy and Stu were up to back in 96 and she knew about the marine prescott and cotton weary situation the year prior and she didn't say anything due to her own selfishness and desire to be with billy now number seven danny should not be ghostface it's just not a writing choice i would make and it doesn't mean you again could not successfully sell me on it if you were to take this path i just think that danny being revealed as ghostface would be unnecessary at this point not to again say that you couldn't sell me on it it i just from my perspective i were pinning the script i would find it unnecessary because you've already given me Richie, you've already given me Billy, you already teased me with Derek, you already teased me with Danny. If you're going to do a returning survivor, I don't think it should be Danny. I think Sam should be able to have her happy ending with her loved one like Sydney has with her loved one in uh, Detective Mark Kincaid. Uh, but you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below for my seven things that I do not think should happen in Scream 7. Uh, let me know down below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and then there's a video in the description I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook Twitter and Instagram You can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover and with all that in mind guys I will see you in the next video